Hey guys, Alan from V Expressions here. Do you have a TD50? Do you have the Infinity Pack yet? If not, you're missing it. I'm going to show you how to be Bonham. All right, guys. So today we're going to take our Infinity Pack from V Expressions Limited. We're going to put it in our TD50, and we're going to create from scratch, basically, a John Bonham kit. I've gotten a lot of requests for that. And um, so I figured I would do a tutorial to show you how to create kits of your own. This being one example, I'll probably do one or two more with some different uh, styles of music or genres. So um, the way we're going to get started is go ahead and load your Infinity Pack into the uh, module if you have not. Um, I am starting fresh. I just reloaded it from scratch. So all my settings are going to be default. And uh, if you're starting from scratch as well, then obviously yours will match. I want to do some disclaimers. Um, I'm not going to play any Led Zeppelin music today because simply the fact that as soon as you put anything from Led Zeppelin into your video, it pretty much gets blocked. So um, what I would suggest to you is if you want something for a reference, the two songs I used for reference were from the remastered 1990 uh, album with uh, Ramble On and um, Whole Lot of Love. Those are the two tracks I'm using as a reference. You can open those up in another tab on your computer. Um, I would suggest not watching this on mobile. If you just want to listen, you can do that, but use some trusted headphones. If you're on a uh, computer, then please bring up something like Spotify or even another tab with uh, YouTube, and you should be able to find one or both those songs, and you can use them for references if you want. Um, if not, you can just listen to the video. Um, the goal here, Infinity is a pack that is about being a realistic kid. It's not about matching CD recordings. Uh, when you match CD recordings, you get a thinner result. Thinner result equates to a thinner result when you actually do play with a band or you do record. Um, so in this case, we do not want to do that. What we want to do is use infinity, infinity for the more realistic drums, and we're going to try to create Bonzo's kit as if you are actually in the room with it. So it's going to be more powerful, um, more body, more in your presence type of result. So don't expect this to match the album. It's not supposed to. It's supposed to be more of a realistic, like you went and sat behind his kit and played it, that type of result. Um, also, um, as you're listening to the reference back and forth, you're going to notice that I'm not matching it perfectly. What I'm trying to do is stick with the instruments that we've already modeled on Infinity, and we're going to show you how to tweak those a little bit to get closer to. Is there going to be a better snare probably in the pack? Sure. Is there another uh, a better snare on another pack that we have? Probably. But um, I'm going to get close in this and give you just a basic tutorial on how to achieve this, how to make your own kits. You can do this with any band, any song, whatever. If you follow the steps I'm going to do, then you should be successful as doing this, at doing the same thing for whatever. If you want to do a Picaro kit from Toto, you can do that just Follow the hints I give you as we go along. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, before the video, I spent some time going through everything everything to save some time. And I picked my instruments, my donor kit, which we'll get to what that is in a moment, and I'm pretty much prepared for this. So what I'm going to tell you is how I went about that real quick. When I'm looking to create something that I don't already have, what I do is I look for basically five things. The first being, of course, the best kit that's as close to it as possible. I start there. Um, if it's got anything in the kit that will work, such as the other four things I'm looking for, which is a snare, bass drum, uh, cymbals, or toms, then great. That's wonderful because that, that work's already done. I'm mainly, when I'm looking for that first donor kit, I'm mainly looking for the kit that sounds the closest especially in the environment. So I'm listening for the ambience. I'm listening for generally the instruments. But when I find a kit that I say that's going to work well, that sounds like it's in the same environment as, let's say, John Bonham in this case, then I'm going to start with that kit. That kit for me was kit 40. Now, the other things I was looking for as I went along and played, by the way, I went through the kits from about number 30 in the pack to, to like 42 or 43 because I knew that the things I were looking for were probably going to be in the dry kits, uh, the vintage kits, the classic kits, that, that type of style, and I knew where those were. So when you're doing this, if you want to follow along, that's where I'm working from is in that area. 
Um, I went with Kit 40. Kit 40 also happens to have good symbols. They're a little bit darker, um, trashier, if you will. Uh, I listened to the ride. It, the ride is nice and bodied and full, but it's going to need some tuning down. Uh, the hi-hat was dirty, uh, smashy. I'm going to enlarge that to deepen the, the uh, tuning of it. But the <clears throat> pardon me, the um, crashes I was okay with. Uh, they're a little bit thin, but they're dark, and I think they work fine. You can always increase those a little bit. I'm not going to do that today, but the crashes I was okay with. The china was nice and full, dark, uh, you know, bottom line, the, the symbols were fine. I'm going to do a little bit of tweaking on these two, and that's about it. Um, I did not like the snare on 40. I thought there could be something better. As I scrolled through the kits and I played snares, I found the snare from number 33 was great. 33 had a snare that had the wide open, loud rim shots I was looking for. They're a little overbearing, so we're going to tweak that. We're going to we're going to take the head and rim volumes and work with them better to get more of the the bonzo sound in the recording, but not as flat, more realistic and live. Um, the bass drum in Kit 40, I found it was it was good. It was vintage sounding, but it was it just wasn't right. I wanted something since this was going to be a realistic kit. I wanted the bass drum to have a little bit more power. So I continued looking, and I think it was in Kit 33. I found a bass drum that was, it, it had the classic sound, not so much vintage, but more a classic, full body sound, but had the deeper tuning. And I felt that that one probably would work perfect, but it would need to be tuned down a little bit more. And some of the resonance in it is going to be pulled out. I'll show you how to do that, um, which is actually going to give you a deeper dive into some of the modeling I do. <clears throat> and then finally, the toms I was looking for, uh, they came from Kit 40. So Kit 40 gave me the cymbals and the toms, basically, and the environment. The toms on 40, um, they're a little bit bright. They're a little bit more modern sounding and, and miking. Uh, so we're going to pull that back just a touch, just, just enough to give it more of the fit with the rest of the kit and get that classic sound. So that's what we're going to be doing. That those, those are the numbers of the kits and the instruments I'm going to be using. So now we're going to head to the module, and we're going to basically set ourselves up. The way we're going to set ourselves up is, you can see here, I have a vintage kit or a vintage session kit 40. It also is subnamed chamber style. The chamber style is exactly what I was looking for—a large environment. It just happened to work perfect. Give you an idea what this kit sounds like before I get started. Let's play a little bit of it. So it's a little flat. It's not John Bonham at all, but what I was listening to was the ambience. Now, all my settings on the faders are at zero at the moment, and that's typical. So I know I'm going to be able to push that ambience and get that wide chamber environment that I'm looking for. So we're going to copy this kit, number 40. We're going to go to Shift and Copy, and we're going to do our kit. We're going to take 40 all the way down to the end to 100. You may wonder why I always use 100. It's simply that I can scroll there fast. Scroll, and no matter what, I'll hit 100, and um, I don't have to search for a, a specific number. That's why I do that. We'll rename it when we're done, but basically, um, I'm going to, at this point, I'm just going to set up my initial ambience. So I'm going to play a little bit, and I'm going to just push my ambience up. Obviously, if you look in our ambience settings here, as I mentioned in the previous uh, video for Infinity, my... Ambience is basically going to be set or enabled for room only. We can add some reverb if we want. I don't think I'm going to do that in this one. Um, but let's see what this sounds like as we just push up our fader on the ambience. So let's give it a shot. So it gives us the image we want, you can see right off the bat, just by pushing out. I probably pushed a little too far because as we start to bring in those other instruments, they may be wetter, and we may end up pulling that back. But at the moment, I pushed that up one and a half, three, about four decibels. So it's not all the way up. I know it's hard to see on my phone, but um, that's. I'll try to give you the numbers as I go. So I'm basically halfway between the second and third dash in between zero and six dB on the ambient slider. So let's get back out of that. We're back in kit. This is uh, 100, the one we copied. So we've got our ambient settings. Now let's start working with some instruments. 
Basically, I'm gonna copy in what I think is the hardest thing to do first. In this kit, it's gonna be a snare. Obviously, this snare does not sound anything like John Bonham's. So we're gonna to go to Shift, Copy. This time, we're just doing a pad instrument. And the snare I chose is the snare from, uh, I think it was 31. I'm gonna look at my notes. 33, so I said those earlier wrong. I said them backwards. So I'm gonna go down to 33. It's from a Vancoustic 3 kit. I'm going to change this to snare. I'm copying the snare. Now, here's the next important thing. And before I get into that, I'm going from 33 snare to 100 snare. I'm going to copy with the pad, EQ, and comp. Now, the reason I'm doing this this time is because all these kits that I chose all the donor instruments from, they're all in the same family, which means all the ambiences, all the mixes are going to be pretty, pretty close. Um... Close enough that I don't, I'm not worried about if I just copy an instrument. Matter of fact, if I just copy an instrument, I'm going to end up with more of the first kit that I copy, the donor kit. Um, we'll call it a recipient kit from now on. The recipient kit is going to override all those settings if I just do the V edit. So I'm going to copy with pad EQ and comp and everything because those settings will work when it's in the same family of kits. Now, if I was using one of the pro acoustics or the comp acoustic kits, and I was trying to go into one of the metal kits or something like that, it's going to be vastly changed. So you got to, you got to kind of use your common sense and try different things. I would also suggest when you first move your donor kit to a spot, maybe move it to a couple of spots or, or maybe three spots and try the two or three different options for copying things. See which one turns out the best, make your notes, and then do a final version of that kit. I'm not going to get into all that today. That's why I wanted to go simple in this video because it will be easier to understand. So we're copying our snare from the 33 kit to the snare on the 100 kit. We're going to use everything. I'm going to go ahead and hit copy, OK, and enter. So now we have our snare. And I'm going to play a little bit of it for you so you can hear it. You get the idea. Um, right off the bat, you can tell it's a lot more lively. And this is exactly what I talked about earlier. We're going to want to pull down this ambience. Okay, so that's a little bit closer. I'm only listening to the snare at this point. Um, probably, we're probably going to end up on the ambient slider between the first and second slash, which would be about 2 dB. So I like that snare so far, but we're going to go ahead and go into it and change some of the things I talked about. We're going to go here to uh, instrument. And the first thing I noticed is I want to adjust those volumes between the rim shot, which is real loud, and the head. Um, we'll get into the tuning in just a moment. I'm, I'm mainly worried about the volume at this point. So I want to bring my, um, I'm sorry, let's go over to mixer here. And I'm going to hit head and rim, because I want to do these independently. And I'm going to go ahead and lock head. Make sure you hit the instrument, and then lock it. And, and as you see now, if I hit the rim, it will not change. I'm going to take my head because I do need a little bit more volume there. I'm going to take that up one. That should be good. And uh, I know it's good. I've already done this. Uh, but I'm going to take that rim down to where it matches better. I've locked my rim. It's really loud. We'll bring it down. Let's start with about three. Now I'm going to check between the two. Still a little bit loud. I'll take it down to four. So that's a little bit more realistic. I'm okay with that. Um, when you work independently, head and rim, always make sure that you go back. Now it's locked, so don't change anything, because if you change something, it's going to make both of them match all of a sudden. Okay, so now I was talking about the, the tuning. I know the tuning is too tight. So we're going to go to um, Instrument, and we're going to go down to Tuning, I'm sorry, over to Tuning and Basic 1. And I'm going to bring the head down. Let's go ahead and go back to Head and Rim. If you get confused, just undo everything, play it, lock it. So now, again, if I hit the rim, it won't lock the rim in. So I'm on my head. I'm going to bring my head down about 10. It's a little bit thicker sound, and when you play the reference track, you'll start to hear this, especially when I get the rest of the kit together. 
The um, rim tuning, though, is obviously, let's swap to our rim. Really high. Again, I'm listening to the reference track. I'm going to bring that down, um, lock to the rim here. Let's drop it about double, 20. Turn out my mic so I can... So that's pretty good. By the way, if you wonder what I'm doing with the mix in, that's my mic that I'm hearing myself talk. So I'm okay with that tuning. I've dropped my rim shots down a lot to match Bonzo's rim shots much better. And I've lowered my head just a little bit to get a little bit more uh, smushier snare like his. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm noticing that overtone in the rim shots. So I'm going to go over to my overtone here. And I'm just going to pull that back to normal. I think that's enough. It's just a little bit. You, you can already hear it. A little bit of that overtone disappears. So I'm just going to do that. Um, let's put that on rim and head. Okay, they're both on normal now. I'm okay with that. Uh, finally, I'm going to go over to... Um, I'm hearing a lot of high end. I'm going to look for my overheads. They are under element in your second one. In your Sorry, when you go down from your instrument to the next page, your overheads and rooms are here. I'm going to bring my overheads down to zero because they're a little bit overbearing. Room. Um, I'm going to push it up a little bit. Just get a little bit more wetness in there. Yeah. So basically I got a little bit more wetness of the room because I, I anticipate once I get everything else in the mix, the cymbals and everything, it's going to start disappearing behind a, a song. So I brought down the overhead to kill some of that brightness, the real top end that I didn't like, and I pushed up the room kind of to offset it a little bit. And then finally, um, I'm noticing... In my sub, go down here to the bottom, my sub instrument here. Um, let's go to V Edit, Tape 2. I want a little more muffling. I'm going by the reference track again, so just push that up a, a bit. So I'm muffling that head a little bit um, on my sub instrument. Actually, muffling everything on the sub instrument. Um, but I think that's going to work in the end. Again, I know it's going to work. <laughs> All right, so the next thing I'm going to do is my bass drum. I'm okay with the snare for now. We'll tweak at the very end. But I think I've got all the settings I'm going to probably end up doing. Let's go ahead and look at our bass drum. We're getting it from kit number 31. The reason was for that, again, was the power that I was looking for. I'm going to go to shift and copy. Pad instrument one more time. And what did I just say? The bass drum's coming from 31. Scroll to 31. It's from another Vin acoustic kit as well, the first one. We'll put this back on kick and kick. Like I said before, I'm going to go ahead and keep the pad, EQ, and comp um, because it's in the same family. So once again, before I do it, pretty dead bass drum from number 40. I'm going to go ahead and copy this one. Enter. Now I've got more of that 24 to 26 inch sounding full body bass drum. There's a lot of um, resonance in it that I think I'm going to pull back a little bit in a moment. I also want to use that to show you something in the modeling. But I'm better with that. So now I've got these two together. So I'm really digging that. I'm digging that full body bass drum. It's going to get a little bit better in a moment. So first thing I notice is the tuning's a little high. So now we're, we're again, we're on our instrument, or sorry, we're on our kit that we copied to. And I'm going to go into my instrument here, kick my bass drum, make sure I'm on it. I'm going to, to tune this. I'm going to actually drop the tuning. Um, let's start with 10. Yeah, a little bit deader. That's really all I want. I want it to be just a touch deader. Um, I don't like the slap of the plastic beater. I'm going to pull that down. Yeah, I like felt two. Felt two is a little bit softer. So the difference between those two, you hear that slap smack of the beater and then felt two. 
just a touch softer and warmer. That's what I like. When it mixes in with that Led Zeppelin music, it's going to sound awesome. Uh, let's go ahead and look at our uh, shell depth. When we look at tuning, we also want to look at the shell depth for resonance and so forth. Um, I do want the resonance, but I know already by looking that the sub instrument is has a lot of um, resonance in it. So I'm going to pull that back because it's a, um, I think it's a 909 bass drum or something. It's an electronic bass drum to add some very low end. What I'm actually going to do is turn this more into a real bass drum. So I'm going to use the resonance from the real bass drum and pull out the electronic bass drum. So let's go ahead and, matter of fact, let's go ahead and go down to sub. And let's go ahead and pull um, sub instrument. This over here on the right, the sub volume. I'm going to pull that back. Or, let's see. Let's take it up. I had a little resonance there. Yeah, I had just a little. To exaggerate, that's what you're listening to. And we'll pull it back to minus three. Kind of almost disappears. I'm going to pull that up just a hair. Let's just meet in the middle. Okay, so there's a little bit of bodied resonance there, low end. But I'm also going to go back up. Just hit instrument a couple times. I want to increase that shell depth. Let's go to about 24. Let's go a little bit more. There we go. Now we're getting that hollow, big bottom bass drum sound. I like that. I like that. So it's starting to sound realistic now. Um, let's go ahead and head into our hi-hat because I'm trying to get these three going really well. So I'm going to hit instrument. I'm going to hit my hi-hat. And... Um, we're going to keep the hi-hat because it's a warm, dark and warm hi-hat. But what I need to do is drop that tuning a lot. Now, how you drop the tuning on the hi-hat? Size. Let's just max it out. Well, not max. Let's go 26. That's pretty low. Let's go to like 30. 30 is nice. There, that's better. That's... Nice and deep and thick, that's what I want. Matter of fact, there we go. So what worked well was thin four. It was on thin five to start with. Pardon me, that gives me a really thin sound, obviously. I want to pull it back a little bit. Get more of that body dark sound. So. Again, we dropped the, the size down to 33 to increase our tuning, or decrease our tuning, sorry. And then I pulled that thinness back. So I've got I got a nice, splashy, swashy, whatever you want to call it, hi-hat, and it's deep. That's perfect. I like it. Um, what I'm noticing, turn my mic down. That foot pedal. Really light. Bottom, you know, you hear that. You really hear that. Well, you're not hearing it here. So let's let's find our um, our pedals under mixer. No, no, no. I'm sorry. Uh, advanced. Go to our pedal volume under instrument. Advanced. Make sure you hit your hi hat. You see it right here at the top. Let's max that out. See what it sounds like. A little bit better. My hi hat hits are not really um, set up well right now. When it works, it works. <laughs> and so I'm okay with that, but I'm going to look at my room because I'm noticing it's a little bit dry for the room. So I'm going to go over here to my ambience, look at the room. I'll go down one so I can see my sins. And my room, it's set drier than everything else. So I'm going to bring that room to start at zero. Yeah, you can hear it widen out now. Yeah, you're starting to hear that. Starting to hear that room environment. That's what I want. So I push those hi-hats up to zero. Let's get back out of that. Let's go ahead and work on a ride while we're here. Hit instrument a couple times. 
it once or twice. And um, basically I went up. So uh, I'm going to increase that. The bell is way too high. And I already went through the tuning with the reference track earlier. And I found that just increasing this size. Um, the whole symbol, I think it was, but. Yeah, that'll be good. So that uh, the ride now is where I need it. It's really all I noticed in the ride was just I needed that deeper tuning. So I dropped it or I increased that 21 and a half. Uh, that's all we need there. I want to double check it, make sure I've got it right. Yeah, you could actually thicken it up more if you want. It's not much there. Thick five, not going to be very much. But anyway, I'll leave it where it's at. Let's get out of that. Finally, the toms. Um, the toms are good. I like them. They're in the right family, if you will. Um, I want to look at the mics because I'm getting too much of that modern microphone sound. Uh, let's go to mics here. Position. Okay, that's why. Insert the, or inside. The mic is inside the head. So you got your head. Your mic's coming in here. You're getting more of that attack. I don't want that attack. So I'm going to pull it out. I'm going to just start with standard. Better, much better. So just to show you, there's a little bit of brightness there, a little bit of brightness in the smack. These changes are subtle. That's the whole key here. The changes are subtle. You have to keep them subtle. Um, if you go drastic, I mean, you can see the rainbow there. So usually just starting a standard and seeing how it sounds. Sounding really, really good now. Um, noticing some ringing that I don't, it's, the ringing's good because it's probably going to get covered up by the music. But I want to muffle those just a hair more. So I'm going to go to my instrument. I'm going to go over here to my mufflers, muffling. And they're on tape five. Obviously, I don't want to go crazy. But um, actually, Yeah, the felt starts to kill them. So I'm going to stick with tape five. I'm going to make a match. Okay, that's more realistic. Everything matches. Before, these three were dead. That's okay because the higher pitch is going to get blended in with the music. Okay, I like that. Sounds good. Okay, finally, we're going to start tweaking. Um, symbols, I don't want to mess with them. I don't want to mess with them. They sound good where they are, so I don't want to mess with them. Let's go to our mixer and start tweaking. Now, normally I would say tweak here at your faders, but when you do that, you still have to end up going back. If you want to keep your faders at zero, you have to go back and change everything. So, or inside the internal mixer. So what we're going to do is we're going to tweak inside the internal mixer so it's already set. And then that way when we get to a kit, we don't have to reset our faders. We just leave it where it is. So um, let's go ahead and um, start with our overall mix. Let's listen to uh, our EQ. See if there's anything there we can improve. Okay, what I'm hearing is the bass drum has the low end I like. I'm okay with that. Okay, I'm going to try to increase a little low end in my toms, but with the Master EQ. Let's go down here to our Master EQ. Um, by the way, to get to it, hit my uh, mixer a couple times, scroll down. The first EQ is your instrument. You'll see it change with each instrument. Your comp is also Per instrument. If you go down to the next comp and EQ, those are for the entire kit. So I'm going to go to my EQ, 
And I want to increase this bottom end a little bit. Let's go to push it up a couple of dB. Or sorry. Usually a sweet spot for low end and, and drums is going to be in the 63, anywhere between 50 and 80 something. I think the 80 is pushing a little bit too much of the low mids. The 63 is pushing just a little bit. If we go back to 50, they start to get thin again. So I'm going to go with 63 and I increased it to decibels. I'm okay with that. Um, but I do want to look at my bass drum EQ alone. Let's hit our bass drum and lock it in. Let's go to our EQ here. And we're doing two decibels at 63. Let's go. No, let's leave it there. Let's leave it there. Let's go to our mixer instead and bring up the volume a little bit. I think this will mix better. Okay, the reason I'm pushing that bass drum is because you want it to sit into a mix. The high end and the low end, or sorry, that the middle, the middle and your low end are gonna get lost in mixes. So I'm gonna push that bass drum just a little bit. Um, I've already set my snare, so we're good there. And um, Believe it or not, that's it. We're done. So we'll go ahead and change our name now. Menu, name, and let's just delete all this. And we'll just call him Bonzo. B O N Z O. And we'll just delete all that. And now we have our Bonzo kit. I hope that helped. Let's play a little bit. So you can even go in there and tweak your ambience a little bit better if you really want it wet. Okay. I'm noticing that that bass drum is getting pretty powerful. I'm going to go ahead and bring him back down a little bit to one, or sorry, to zero. So that matches better. Um, if you want to tweak the ambience like I was talking about, let's go ahead and go to the top page there. Which reminds me, once you get your ambience where you want it, let's say that we only went to three decibels on our fader. So all I'm going to do here in order to be able to put my fader back to zero is just push that three decibels on my room. And it still matches. I want to bring in a little reverb. Let's look at our reverb sins to see what's going on here. Uh, mainly in the snare. So I don't know that we really need it. We turned it on. It helps a little bit. Yeah, I'm okay with that. A little wetness behind a song will sound nice. And um, I think that's it. I'm, I'm very happy with that. If you want to, you can turn on the enhancer and see what that sounds like. The enhancer is adding a little bit of brightness in the sounds to me like the uh, symbols yeah so there and a little bit here in the snare you can see it so i'm mainly looking for the ones that are getting up close to around 12 db or minus 12 db that's where your brightness is coming in and you can see here on my auxiliary china that it is down to keep the trash of your sound. So that was a perfect pick for a kit to start with. Awesome.
Hey, so I hope you liked the video. I hope you got something out of it, especially you guys with TD50s and the Infinity Pack. If you do not have an Infinity Pack, I'll leave links in the description below and at the end of the video as well so you can see the video. And you can go check it out on our site at vexpressionsltd.com. That's V Expressions Limited. And if you just watched this out of curiosity and you have another module that's not the TD50, please go check us out anyway. See what we have for your module. I had a lot of fun making this. I hope you had a lot of fun watching it. If you did, please give us a thumbs up. If you didn't, give us a thumbs down, and I hope that you sound like Bonzo too.